Hi, I'm Barbara. Welcome to Mess to Yes. I love having some lightweight extra chairs in a dining room to pull up when you have extra people around a table, but you don't want them to be ornate or take up a lot of space in the room otherwise. These are some great vintage Italian chairs that I found. They were only $35 because the rush is giving out. These can be a fantastic bargain. If you can find a great frame that you want to make over, I'm going to show you a super stylish, simple and cheap way to make these chairs look like new. First thing you want to do when you get any kind of a vintage chair is clean it because everything's going to look a little better when you can see the wood grain and it's shiny and pretty. I mean, you might consider painting them if they're in really bad shape, but these are actually really in beautiful shape. And I love the high scale of the backs and that they're narrow. So they're perfect for pulling up when kids come over without having to have them sit in your fancy dining room chairs. So next thing we're gonna do is remove this rush seat. To do that, all we have to do is cut all the way around and meticulously unwrap this. It's gonna take a few minutes, so I'll be right back with you. So now that we're back to our bare frame, we can start to finish it with a little bit of style. We are going to use this jute webbing. It's really hot right now. I'm sure you've seen it woven into pillows, used as accents on bulletin boards and frames, all over the place you see this. We are gonna use it sort of for its intended purpose. It's actually an upholstery strapping and we're gonna strap the chair. I found this for between 75 and 90 cents a yard, depending on where you buy it, which makes this a really great deal for a hot look and a strong fiber that will hold as a seat. We're going to attach it to the frame with decorative nail heads. Both of these items will be found in the upholstery section of your sewing store. Don't go looking for this with the ribbons and trims because it's not there. It's actually meant to be under the fabric as part of the frame. So that's where you'll find it with the hardware. So what we're gonna do is start by, we're gonna do three straps this way and three straps that way and we're gonna weave them in between. How simple is that? And on each strap, I'm gonna use three nail heads. If you think you're gonna I'm planning on using these for children. If you think you're gonna have larger people sitting in them or you just wanna be extra safe, go ahead and put five nail heads in each one of these straps. Use as many as you feel right at making it secure for your family. So we're gonna start by, we're gonna wrap it around so that it starts on the top, it wraps completely under, and it comes over the fabric again. So let's take a closer look at that. So for ease of demonstrating to you, I'm gonna actually put some staples to hold the edge into place. It also will give it a little bit of extra strength. So you start on the top with your edge of your fabric or your jute on the outside edge. Wrap into the middle, wrap back and over the top. This is where our nail heads are gonna go. But before I do that, I wanna cut this to approximate length. So I'm gonna take it over here, wrapping it like I'm underneath and then bringing it back out just to give me an approximate length that I need. And remember, it's always better to cut it a tiny bit longer than having to struggle. So this is the trickiest part of the whole thing. The wood on these chairs, especially vintage chairs, is hard wood. And I don't mean it's difficult. I mean it is the kind of wood that is hard and strong and is difficult to nail into. So we are going to pre-hammer, 
sorry about that, holes where we want our upholstery tacks to go. We cannot make them too deep. There has to be a little bit of something left. But trust me, I used up an entire box of upholstery decorative trim heads before I realized that I just couldn't hammer into this stuff. So you want it to still sit a little bit above the hole. And then you're going to hammer it down in so that it's still grabbing the wood. I'm going to make my next ones a little bit shallower so that it has more room to grab into the wood. I'm telling you, I'm a little bit afraid of these chairs because when I was pulling out the nails before, I kept hitting my hand on the back. So these nails will fight with you a little bit. You gotta be careful. Now when you're allowing some room for that to grab the wood, you have to hammer gently until it gets in there because the nail part of these tacks is not as strong as your wood. And if it, if you hammer too hard, the wire in the nail head will just bend and not go in straight. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to get all three of them this way, and then I'll show you how to weave them back the other way. So once you have all three straps in going one direction, it doesn't matter if you start front to back or side to side, then start with your middle one apply your tacks, and then just start weaving them like you're weaving a paper basket in kindergarten. Over, under, over, under. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am installing this chair in an exhibition room at the Home and Garden Show tomorrow. So you would not want your straps to be quite this loose. No saggy bottoms on your chair. So over, under, over, under. Then you wrap around the back. Now because we've left a little extra fabric, we're always going to have to come back and measure and trim when we actually get to installing it. Somehow I usually end up leaving about half an inch. All right, so then we're just going to do our same. I'm going to try and make this a little tighter this direction. So my chair doesn't look quite so droopy in the drawers. Okay. Make yours look better than mine. I know you can do it. I will actually tighten mine up. I will probably, we're going to install this in the exhibition room. So be sure to go and look at dining room tour, serving up style to see all the elements that we put into the space. And you can look for these. Oh, see, look, that one just completely bent, proving my point that this wood is too hard and my stupid nail tacks are not strong enough. I just did not go deep enough. But then if you go too deep, they don't hold. This is the only tricky part of this whole process, how not to hammer your thumb and how to keep your tack straight. Oh, I give up. That looks good. Perfect, right? Okay, so we're going to do that three more times going this way, and then voila, you are going to get the final product. So here is your fabulous yes transformation. We took what was still a great chair with good bones, but that was dirty and had a broken seat and made it stylish and fresh and new and perfect as a little accent chair, a dining chair, probably not a kitchen chair. We spent $70 for the pair at an antique store. They're really vintage and maybe $10 on other upholstery supplies. Give it a try. It's easy and it's fun. Thanks for watching.